Structure out in space in order to build make, stuff right. to combine. Like landing on an asteroid right now, I think we've only done it once. So lazy. What happened? Americans used to <laughs> Americans used to go to space. <laughs> um, now it's just robots. Robots. We talk about Mexicans taking our jobs, but we don't talk about how robot robots are taking our jobs as astronauts. If you're gonna take our jobs. You better do a better job. Yeah, you better go to space more. Anyways, thanks for having me on, Aaron. Of course. You're my good friend. Yes, we're good friends. Yay. Yay. One of my first friends when I came back to comedy. As a matter of fact. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you remember the first time we met? Yeah. It was outside of here. Well, it's here. And then we went to Star Bar. Right? That sounds right. Or maybe Joe's Pizza. We went around the corner. Yeah. And we, link, we were linked arm in arm. Do you remember? Do you remember? No, I feel like you don't remember. No, I actually, I, I always ask this question. I don't always ask this question, but it's a funny question because a lot of times I don't even remember the answer. Oh, I see. But I remember, yeah, I feel like that's the, like the, the, the second time we met, or maybe we hadn't officially met. I don't think we had officially met yet. That's what it is. I think we'd probably seen each other we at my yes earlier. We would have been friends earlier. Of course. Yeah. I'd seen your all over my body. I'd seen you do that before I met you. You saw the original version. Yes. yes. Many no, iterations ago. Because you knew, dude, that's a joke that almost died because I lost it. You lost it? I'm just gonna take off my sweater all of a sudden really hot. Yeah, I lost it. Like you lost? I lost it, I don't know where it is. Um, like physically? I, yeah, I don't know if it, right now I write everything and put everything in the cloud. I Try to record everything, at least audio. Mm -hmm. um, but this is just one of those weird things. I mean, I might have a, a, a recording of it, mm -hmm. but I'm not doing good jobs of taking notes. And, um, I see. So it was almost yeah. a lost artifact. Yeah, but then I just kind of remember the joke. Yeah. And I kind of like re recreated it. So I think is it's it better so, than ever. Yeah, I agree. I think your, your comedy is at such a great, a great upward tone line. So what is your writing process? My writing process, I'm really bad at having any sort of organized, like, I write for this amount of time a day, and I'm always, be like, I'm not good so at that. Required. It's not required, I would, but that's who I wish I was. Um, but really what it... Smart goals. Smart goals. <laughs> Specific. Measurable. Only 
kill myself. <laughs> I'm kill myself today. Oh, I don't do the whole chat. <laughs> sorry, sorry, you don't have to. Well, it's only for your paid customers. Oh, oh, oh no, go oh, hear I'm... it. Never mind. I'll stop. You guys have to pay to see that joke. Yeah, um, to live comment. One of the goals with, besides having wonderful guests on is to encourage the theme is to have people come to live comment. Yes, I and agree. No yeah, there is no substitute. Watching the specials on your TV or on YouTube. Well, sure. It's, it's great to support, but that's not what the art form is. Right. For me, the art form is bodies in a room sharing time and space together, creating an yeah. irreplicable thing. You know what I mean? That's right. That's what this I'm is why I like to try to do this podcast live. Live. So my writing process mostly is either from a conversation Often from a conversation, I'll say something and I'll say, okay, that, I like that as a thought, as a nugget. And then I'll go back to it and either I already have jokes that maybe it fits into, I'm like, how do I, how do I incorporate that into a joke? Or it's just its own standalone thing that I have to figure out. One, how do I incorporate it into a set or whatever. But I don't, I, I, I write, my writing process is, discreet to the stage. I don't really write on stage so much. That's a rare occurrence for me where like, I figure something out on stage. When it happens, it's so exciting. But I'm, I'm more of a pre-planned person and I like- Well, you're on stage at your work, right? No, but if I like how a joke is doing well enough, I will like go pretty much beat for beat, which I don't necessarily recommend. But I, I, I tend to be a little bit more methodical than I think a lot of comics are, and I don't say that as a good thing. <laughs> I say that as like, I'm self-conscious about that. Sure, that makes yeah. sense. Because everyone else, like so many people, so many of the greats are like, I just get on stage and I figure it out there. And that gives that. Well, I think that, that just, that's just, you shouldn't worry about that. It's just, there's a lot of different styles. And yeah. Different Paths, and you can always change your writing style later. Right. Sometimes you're maybe going to be forced to change your writing style. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I don't have, uh, uh, you know, just a lot of time to sort of like think of the joke in the moment and then pause my life. And right. Write and then, it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. One thing I started to do though, because um, my my boyfriend pointed out that I'm someone who like always needs like stimulus. I need to be watching TV or playing a game or listening to a podcast, and how like maybe that isn't good. That like I'm never alone with my thoughts. Um, right. Like as a child, if you're alone with your thoughts a lot. I think that might be one of the reasons why kids are so creative because they're like constantly just using their minds to conjure up all sorts of ideas. Right. Um, and so I started. Um, both taking showers and driving. Wow, she just started taking showers. I started showers. taking showers, and it's kind of like changed the game for me. <laughs> um, I'm getting booked a lot more. Um, no, I started taking showers and driving in complete silence to like force myself. So you used to take showers with the music? So either music, podcast, or this is really embarrassing, but I have this big Ziploc bag and I would put my iPad in it and I'd watch TV. It's <laughs> not okay. pretty waterproof now, right? iPads are. You can take an iPad into the shower. Um, the okay, let's. One. Really? I didn't know that. I might want to double check. Yeah, the internet. this might be a sick, sick prank. <laughs> um, but so I used to do that, uh, and like I'd watch Survivor or something in the shower. I also like to take, like take a long shower, so it'd be nice to just like sit there with the water rushing over you as You're you watch awkward. someone be yeah as you watch someone get voted on yeah, emaciated and I'm like body goals <laughs> um well it is a dream of mine to be a little survivor that's pretty funny um but anyways that has helped me write being in silence so I started writing without pen and paper in front of me but being in silence and thinking about my set and just going through it and then almost working myself up to be like in this like flow solo, state. huh? Flow state. Yeah, flow state, like own conversation where I'm just like riffing off of my own bits, yeah. and the stakes are very low because no one's around me. But if I can get myself worked up enough to be in a performance mindset, even though I'm not in a performance setting, I can start riffing like how other comics actually do on stage. But so that's been cool. That's been that's been. Cool. What about? Um... 
just setting up a camera, uh, have your notes in front of you, and just doing your set. I do without anybody else around. Yeah, I I do that more just audio because I get really anxious about watching myself do comedy, which well, you could do video and then only listen to the audio. Well, no, I need to get better because like a lot of comics that I respect, like in the scene, like people who are at our our level, um, they watch themselves because it's important to like see how you perform on stage and. Maybe you don't, you don't, maybe who you think you are as a performer isn't actually what is being perceived. So I, that's another goal of mine is to watch myself more. Um, but I do, I, before big shows, like shows that like, you know, I'm like maybe nervous about because they're like an opportunity. Uh, I do like hold something like a microphone and stand outside and rehearse like that, but without, maybe with my phone nearby in case like I miss a transition, but like I try to, not be reliant because I used to be a, always in my bullet points. Oh yeah, the, the, this but, uh, yeah. The step would be to, to look at your notes, record it, see if you got everything, and then and then eventually like go off book and then watch it back and look at your notes. Did I get everything? Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's a good point. Wow, that's a good idea. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, I've done that a few times. I want to do that more. Uh, yeah, I need to be like more like intentional in how I do things. Yeah, another thing that. I have haven't actually done that I want to do is record the video and then go back and watch it and and take notes mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I riffed here. Yeah. And or this got you know. Or like black. this this has the most dead time. Like this need there needs to be something here or something like that. Yeah. I you want to know who I I learned about people doing that was through Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Did you ever watch that? Yeah, it's really good. Because she, she would do that for her husband, remember, in like the first yeah. episodes. It's good. Sweet. Uh, let's see, so. So I know you use the stage name. I don't think she wants you to know. Oh, you can know my last name. My I stage name stands for my last name. Right. But yeah, it's a secret. It's a secret. Ha ha. Yeah. Um, so I just didn't want my last name so long. So that's why I have a station. It was just it was more like a convenience than anything. But also because Louis C.K. had just been like canceled. I know they're like kind of not canceled anymore. But I was like, I'll be the new Louis C.K. <laughs> I'm Sarah R. W. Yeah. That's cool. And you know, I, I am. I am the new Louis C.K. That's what everyone tells me. <laughs> yeah, they're giving her permission. <laughs> that's all it is, it's just a bunch of people. Trying to hug subtly, you know. <laughs> uh, so how did you get into comedy? Well, uh, I had moved here after college, and I was... Um, Let's talk about San Diego. San Diego. I moved to San Diego uh, after college. I was... Um, I had gone to business school. I was looking to get a job in finance. And at that point, I just moved here, was still kind of on the job hunt, and my friend said, hey, I just saw online that there was an open mic with like $5 happy hour on Tuesdays um, at ACC, American Comedy Company. Neither of us were comics or anything. She was like, but that sounds like fun, like a cheap way to go out right. and have entertainment. We were both like people who like performing arts, live, live arts. Um, so we went. And it was like this was end of this was like October twenty eighteen, and it was all guys. Not one woman went up, <laughs> went, went up that night, and it was like a lot of rape jokes. Nice. I know it was it was right at the tail end when those were still happening, like a lot of roofie jokes, a lot of rape jokes, and um, I have to sneeze. Live on the podcast. <laughs> In the brick room with a madhouse coming. And for 20 bucks, I'll give you the shit that I just need some. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> but so it was a lot of like great jokes. So me and my friend, who both like loved writing, we had never done anything like that, but we were like, let's put our name in the bucket next week. Like, we're definitely not going to be the worst people that go up, so like, why not give it a shot? Just to add some more feminine energy to, yes. to it. And so we both spent the whole week writing our first three minutes, and we put our names in, and I got picked. 
she didn't that day. Um, and off of that show, I got a DM a couple days later from Chris Espinoza saying, I book at the Madhouse, would you like to be on a show um, in December? So this was like two months out. And I, he didn't know that that was the first time. The, the time that he saw me was the first time I'd ever been on stage. Yeah, I wasn't so about good. to, I don't even know. I mean, there's a lot, of people might listen to this and be like, well, you know, People believe that girls have it easier when they first start out in comedy, at least in this scene, because guys give them opportunities hoping that... We're not going to speculate about Chris Espinosa. I'm not speculating. I'm saying listeners... You can. Listeners might be thinking, oh, she just got that because she's a girl. Right. Maybe I was really good. You, you'll you have to ask Chris. Um, but I do... I, I, Give a lot of props to Chris for taking a chance on me. That was that. And so, anyways, I was like, well, I have to keep doing mics until this first show because I gotta get better so I can do well at my first show. And my first show was in this room back when Mike Drop used to, or Mike Drop. <laughs> back when Matt, I should move. Back when Madhouse used to do shows simultaneously out there and in here. Um, Jason Chenny was the headliner, and it was right after, because it was like December 28th or 29th, 2018 was my first show. Um, and then from there, I was booked on my second show. You know, someone who's on the show with me said, I am part of this show. And so comedy started taking on a life of its own, and I was like, you know, I never really imagined myself doing this, but as long as like the net is putting itself in front of me, I'll continue to jump. And then month by month, it started becoming more and more of my life. I started caring more and more about it, you know, and then it got to the point where I was like, well, oh, I'm, I've been booked on one show a month and that's, that's great. Like that feels like a lot, you know, and, um, you know, here now, over five years later, it has like consumed my entire life like a virus <laughs> in the best and worst ways. Um, so yeah, that's how I got my start. It was just going up, up on a mic because I wanted there to be less, fewer rape jokes on that stage for an evening. Yeah, and if it is a rape joke, it, it's a woman's perspective. Yeah, I mean, listen, try to make whatever you think is funny, funny. If it's not, I'm allowed to think whatever I want of you afterwards. Yeah, it's, it's a risk. It's, it's the risk. Most rape jokes told by guys aren't funny. Um, not saying I haven't heard one that's made me chuckle before. They have, but it's hard. It's hard. Uh, so, do you have a hobby or passion that is not related to comedy? Oh, well, I love theater. Like, I love being a fan of theater. I'm, like, on all of the theater, like, theater Instagram, theater blogs, theater TikTok. I love knowing all of the drama of what's going on on Broadway. So, that. Um, I am starting to knit. Nice. I'm playing Zelda. Which one? Tears of the Kingdom. Hell yeah. At the moment. That's been obviously a lot of my time. That's a very robust game. And I like it very much. I really love my Nintendo Switch. I really like Nintendo specifically. You're not sponsored by Nintendo yet. No, not yet, but we will be. We will be. Uh, once they hear Neil deGrasse Tyson this year, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then I really like crosswords. <laughs> um, You're made of crossword? No. Really? Even for school? Yeah, for school on a generator back in the day. Oh, you cheated. Yeah, I used a generator. Um, but no, I really like crosswords. I like NPR. I like going out and listening to live jazz. That's how I met my boyfriend. Um, yeah, right next door. Right next door to this place. Patrick's, where love is made. But um, pretty much my hobbies are all that of like an old person. Knitting, crosswords, NPR, jazz, theater. I am a 70 year old man. So my hobby is being a 70 year old man. Man. There you go. Yeah. Do not deny my gender expression. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That makes sense. All right. Um, 
Do you wish you had started comedy earlier? Yeah. I feel like everyone's so young. And like, I, that's, what's funny is, so I started when I, I was- I love asking this question. Huh? <laughs> I love asking this question because I'm- Well, you, well no, you're not. And also, it's different for men and women, unfortunately. I feel like it's easier, and you can say I'm wrong. I feel like it's easier to age as a man than it is to age as a woman. In oh. entertainment, at least. You gotta watch the video to know how old I look. Yeah, but... I, I, I know what you're saying, but like I feel like no one wants to listen to like an aging woman, but people are totally stoked to hear the perspective of like an aging man. That's my that's my opinion. But anyway, um, yeah, I wish I got started earlier. I feel like I've had to play a lot of catch up, especially because I wasn't a big stand up fan. Like a lot of people who go into stand up know a lot about stand up. I I didn't. Um, but the thing is, is like, I, I started at 23, but COVID happened and I didn't do like any stand up during 2020 and a lot of 2021. I know a lot of people like did grind or even started during that time and I just yeah. like did it. So I feel like my progress has been stunted a couple of times. Yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like now like we have someone in the, this is, the community was 12 years old. Like, how do you say He's a freak of nature. But I'm just He's saying. He's amazing. <laughs> Is he amazing? Uh, I've seen him there. He's really funny. He's really funny. Yeah. I've never seen him. Cool. I just like the kids of this generation are like too much. Comedies. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. They're encouraged too much. Yeah, his big he's going to like turn 20 and I know what to talk about, I'm sure. Right. Um. But yeah, I feel like people are getting started in comedy now really young because it's such a like a social media thing. So people are getting started as young as like 16 to 18. Uh -huh. And there's more of that happening. I know that like back in the day there were people who got started really young, but it was like rare. Uh, now I feel like it's more of the norm and that makes me feel like a has been. Okay. So yes. I wish I started younger. I wish I was younger. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you got we got we got there. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so what are your goals in comedy? My goals in comedy are to make my enemies pay. Okay. One. Two. I have a dream of writing a one-woman show and taking it to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Have you ever heard of the Edinburgh Fringe Festival? Sounds familiar. It's like the original Fringe Festival of the world, and it's like a big comedy festival now. And what I would, is that in? It's Scotland and Edinburgh. Edinburgh? Is that how you say it? Or Edinburgh? Oh, cool. One of your Scottish fans will write it and correct me. Sure. Um, so I want to write a one woman show. Um, I want to have a solo podcast one day. Um, as far as like stand-up stand. Would this be a solo podcast? Do I have guests on or? Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Um, like as far as like like my set goes. It's like, obviously like one day I would love a special, right? But on the way there, like I, I just, I want to be funnier. Like I, I, like I just, that's my biggest goal is like, I want to be funnier while continuing to figure out what it is that I'm trying to say. You know, I, I, I like to think that I'm a comic who's trying to say something when, with my jokes. That's so like you, you want to help change the world, make it better? I want people, to be more introspective and and critical and like I want people's critical thinking to be firing when they're watching me, um, and I want people to feel like a collective connection. Those are the things I want. I'm not gonna change the world. Like I'm not gonna stop, like solve like climate change with my comedy. I don't think comics are who changes the world, but like one of the reasons I love the live aspect of it so much more than like the live taping specials of it is because it's one of the last frontiers where you're fostering like human connection in an 
uninterrupted way. Like ideally, no one's on their phones and people aren't talking and they're all experiencing the same stimulus for that moment, whether it's like at a mic or at a, at a show. How often does that happen today anymore? Doesn't, we don't really go to the movies like we used to. Like everything's there streamed. There used to be live music playing at the, the silent movie. There used to be live music playing. We used to not even have phones. At sports games, everyone is filming like this. At concerts, everyone's filming like this or our texting and stuff like that. The only places that really this kind of art is uh, has been preserved is stand-up comedy, live theater, and like orchestral symphonic music. Yeah. And so it's like, I, I feel really passionate about like preserving the human connection piece of it. <laughs> so that makes me think of questions. Um, so, would you ever just doing a way? Okay, would you ever do like different characters on the stage? Maybe. So you know what's funny is like I consider like San Diego doesn't have like an alt scene. Like, do you can? I'm alt. Yes. Right here. Yes. I consider you an alt comic. Oh, I'm so ha happy about myself. I'm having, I'm putting things together. I'm having a, a series of puns. Yeah. I got three different sets of, I got pretzel, I got sandwich shop, which is new. Fun. And I have a skateboard. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I still need to work on that one. Um, and, and this uh, sandwich shop, I started doing, I, it's as for me. The, the me, the guy, and then the girl I'm flirting with. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing a girl's voice. Oh, that's fun. So it's a character. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. So I consider you an all comic who like kind of like pushes outside of the bounds of like set up joke. You know what I mean? Like you have characters and ways that you play with like inflection and performance and uh, that I think is really cool. I think another all comic in the scene, I would say is like Bob Hansen just returned he's I, I like his stuff oh, yeah. and as someone like who, who comes like from a theater world I really like admire and love the absurd and wackiness and like creating tension because you're you're addressing people in a way that they're not used to being addressed and, like it's surprising I would love to delve into that more it's a confidence thing you know I feel like in normal life I'm an, I'm an, I live an alt life, but my comedy's not alt. Okay, I just thought of an idea. Okay. Would you be interested okay. in going up on stage with me okay. and, and reading the part of the girl? Yes. Hell yeah. Yeah. We're bringing it back. Bring theater. I love when theater and comedy, when those lines are blurred. That's my favorite. And that's why I think like my biggest dream is like writing a one woman show with it, which it's not like I'm not the first comic to ever do that, but All right. yeah. Okay, and then the next question is, uh, do you ever see yourself doing like uh, a comedy song? I don't know about live. Like maybe I could see myself writing like a parody song or like something satirical that's musical. M more so, I could see myself writing like a comedy musical. Like, you know, like the South Park guys did Book of Mormon, um, something like that. I would love to write a comedy musical one day. That would be sick. Um, but writing a comedy song, maybe. But I don't know Bo Burnham. Or what, what does that girl do? There's these girls who do that. But who wants, wants to listen to a bunch of broads? No, they're funny. I just can't remember their names. Um, there's a few. Well, this one is a big one. <laughs> I just don't know their name. I've seen them live. Like one plays the piano, and she has like short hair. She's like mousy. Yeah, that's um. I'll, I'll think of it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Music. I'm gonna look it up. We have to look it up sometimes. 
Sometimes we gotta go to the internet. So what is your favorite joke? Of mine or in general? Just wherever you think. Oh, that's so much. hard. That's so hard. It doesn't have to be for all time. It could just be in the moment. It doesn't have to be one. Um. Or even past. The jokes that come to mind, like the one, like uh, like you know, Blaze Chicoli, his jokes, like remember when, like remember the before, the time before there were trains and damsels in distress to start to death, like those jokes of him, of his. Again, so different to what I do. Everything that's different to what I do, I love. And so those, like, in the scene, I think are so funny. Those are so funny. Those come to mind. Um, shout out, Blaze. Yeah, he's, he's so good. Um, I'm trying to think about a joke, even one joke that's ever been said. <laughs> No, that's enough. We can okay. move on. Okay. Uh, what about, do you have a favorite fan interaction? Fan of mine? Uh, yeah, a fan of Sarah. Or like when I was a fan of someone. Sure, whatever you interpret. I mean, anytime, like, I think like I, I have this, I have like one person who's like made the concerted, concerted effort to like come out to see me specifically and we weren't friends in the before times like she saw me once and then like was like oh I, this is one of my favorite comics now and just like having that was like such a milestone yeah. for me that's exactly what I'm talking about yeah um that she's like I started this and I came and this well what happened was I was at emo night at the casbah and I was dancing and singing and girl she goes this is so random. I noticed her looking at me. She's like, are you a comedian? And I was like, yeah. She goes, oh my God, I love you. Like I've seen you at American Comedy Company, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, and I follow you. Like you're so funny. And so we took a photo. And then like a couple weeks later, she was like, I saw you're up here in Oceanside. Like, so I came out to see this show. And she's, she's been to a few things. Nice. So that, that, that was very, very rewarding. Um, That's awesome. But I have someone who thinks well of me. Enough to see my, my, you know, my set multiple times. <laughs> yeah, it's not be like on the show. <laughs> right, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, so, do you have merch? No, I want merch though. Merch? How is your merch, merch shop, going? What about shop glasses? Shop glasses are the hottest ticket, the hottest thing I have. Do you think that's what goes? Um, I mean, it's not like I sell a lot of them, but if I, if I, if I sell even one, and, and it's donation based, you know, it costs me whatever to, to make. And you know, the average right now is like, like five dollars. Oh, nice! So eighty percent markup. Yeah. Um, no, I want them for a while. I was thinking maybe I could do a line of stickers, of uh, pictures of me with my fist in my mouth, because I could put my fist in my mouth. Wow. <laughs> I think I've seen it. Oh, I do it here a lot. People, <laughs> I'm, I'm walking around with my visitor about the madhouse and cool out of it. Um, so that, um, I thought of making like shirts or hats that say the impressive depressive, because that's what I think I am. I think I'm like a high achieving depressive depressed person. You know, well, you're amazing. Thank you. I'm very sad. Um, very little serotonin. Or shirt, shirts that say Sarah Tonin. Nice. Okay, so what about putting that on a shot glass? Oh, that's good. Daily dose of serotonin. Might be too many words. That's too many words. So yeah. serotonin. Yeah, so do a shot glass and then get a hundred of them and bring, bring them to you. And that would probably cost a hundred dollars to make a hundred. To, to get a hundred, to get it to a down to a dollar, you have to buy like 200, almost like 300 of them. Okay. So it's like, like it's not, not quite $300. Maybe I know someone in the printing business. <laughs> you gotta go big, you gotta believe in yourself. I know, I'm so poor. That's been the hardest part. But you don't have to buy that many. You can, you can I know, but then, then the it's prices. a sheer markup. Come on. Come on, Mark Cuban. But you gotta like 
Hello, yeah, sharks. Be, like, <laughs> kind of work up to that Hello, sharks. I'm Sarah W, and I'm asking for two hundred dollars for zero percent ownership of my company, um, so I can buy shark glasses. <laughs> technically, uh, donation based. Yeah. Oh, it's not technically. Yeah. Non-profit. Yeah, because I'm trying to get enough people to have shot glass so that I could have like a set of shot glasses. Oh my gosh, limited edition. Like when like McDonald's used to do like the cups and stuff. Yeah, and if, if not, if, if not if anybody who does it, I'm just gonna make a second shot glass. Okay. And then I'm gonna make a third shot glass. And they're gonna, gonna be theme. thematically tied? Yeah, they'll be all San Diego Comments. Oh, this idea! Yes, I remember. I remember. Like, like a baseball, like a baseball card. Yeah. Who, so you're gonna be Aaron. Can I pitch Sarah? <laughs> yeah. Can second edition be Sarah? I just want to be the second most valuable. No, you make a shot glass and then you give me some, um, or I buy them off you. You know, or work it out and then. So I or see it's like it's or like you have some of the set and I have some of the set. I see. Right? If it's we're trading, I see making it more valuable. I see, because it's like um and people will pay even more money. Right. No, right. Donate. Donate more money. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. All right. Interesting. Um, I was born in Los Angeles. Uh, my parents like have quite a bit, bit of an age gap. So my dad had me in his fifties, and my mom was in her twenties. Um, and my dad is a trained theater actor. Um, and then, so my childhood was pretty fun in Los Angeles. I liked my childhood in Los Angeles. Quite a bit. My parents were married. Um, everyone was you know, in a relationship according to the proper sexuality. This will make sense in a second. <laughs> and it was like it was like a nuclear family. My mom decided to go to med school while I was growing up. Yeah. And so once you're done with med school you go into residency and like that's kind of like a whole big process. And she got placed at a hospital in Kansas City. And I was 12, 20, 13 at that point. And so we, they moved us to Kansas City from LA at that point. And then a year later, my mom and dad divorced because my mom is gay. And then my mom had to go on a gay adventure to find herself. And I was so angry. So like my teen years, I was really angry at my mom. Uh, I lived with my dad in Kansas. Um, you know, I was brown and Jewish in Kansas. So that was interesting. So you didn't, you didn't want to move back to LA? No, he didn't. So originally when my mom was like, I'm gonna, like I got matched in Kansas, my dad asked me, he was like, Whitney and mom wanna to go to Kansas. I wanna stay in LA, do you wanna stay in LA with me? And that age I was like, I am being asked to choose whether the family should like break up. Like at that point it wasn't like divorce or not, but like, I'm not, I was I was smart enough to know at the time that like that meant like an end of an era, you know. And so I said no, even though I did want to stay in LA, right. I didn't want to stay in LA at the cost of breaking up our family. Um, so we all went, and then once my mom left, my dad like hates moving. He's like, well, we're we're here now. And um, my dad also he's originally from the Midwest. He's from Ohio, so he had like kind of missed the Midwest in the sense of like. Nice. It being family oriented and like we had a, sm a small house in LA, you know, we thought we were outgrowing, but we couldn't uh -huh. afford much more. In Kansas, you could afford, you know, like everyone had their own bedroom and their space. And um, with my little sister, got a horse. And okay, by the time she got a horse, it's over. Well, yeah, I never got a horse. She had two horses. I just was. <laughs> you had two horses? <laughs> yeah, yeah, hot rod and. Uh, Misty. Uh, but so yeah, and then at that point, you know, kids are really a adaptive. So like I started making friends and like creating my whole new 
my whole life. So I will say my, my, but despite, you know, all of that, my family was always like hyper expressive. Like we always were, we're very communicative. We, I never felt unloved or anything like that. Um, I like didn't really know like waspy preppy people until I moved to Kansas. And like I would see so many of them at like dinner, like they don't like talk to their families or their parents know nothing about them or like no one's joking with each other. And like my family is very like we're very close in that way. So I'm very I'm very grateful for my family despite all of the like the Yiddish words like Mishagas, like the craziness of it all. Um, but yeah, it, it was a fun, rowdy upbringing. I used to be like quite the bookworm. I wasn't. I wasn't like class clown or anything. Okay, so what's your favorite book? Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. It's a Russian book. Okay. You've heard of it? Yeah. It's about like, the premise is like this guy, he's an academic, and he decides like he's smart enough to commit the ultimate murder and never be caught. Like it's so easy to commit murder. And so he does it. And then like, front, he pretty much like, from within, his morality is like eating himself alive. Interesting thing. Yeah, that's the point. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> I was just guessing. <guessing-ing. laughs> yeah, he goes to Siberia. That's how the book ends. And plot twist, the redeeming character of the whole book is a prostitute. Mm-hmm. So it's about morality and yeah, it's really, it's really cool. It's really good. What's your favorite book? Um. Hard to pick just one, so I, I, I'd say for a long time it's Dune. Oh yeah, and I just finished Red Rising series. Have you ever the what? Red Rising. It's compared to Dune a lot. Oh nice. It's sci-fi uh, dystopian. It's really good. Sci-fi dystopian. I want to put that in my notes. I, there's six books out, and the last one will be the, the next one will be the last one. He hasn't released the date, but it's fun. It's a series. Yes. The first book is called Red Rising, but it's the Red Rising series. Highly recommend. Sweet. Yes. Uh, on, what is it? Uh, I forget the name of the book series. Let me just double check. Is it sci fi? Oh, hey, Karen, are we really recording? I don't know. Yeah. The top of the card. Um, the plane. So, so the. Uh, Erickson. Um, I don't know the name of the series right now. It's okay. But uh, it's a 10 book series. Uh, fantasy, sci fi? It's a uh, fantasy. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, we're my best friends. See, yeah, I'm more, I'm the sci fi. And my, my best friend is very bookish from college. Like, she's always reading. She's very fantasy. Low key fantasy, like, gets a little. Smutty sometimes. Sure. Have you found that? There's a lot of sex in fantasy. Well, At least in verse. It's kind, of, it kind of like an allegory for life, right? Right. There's not as much sex in sci fi. Yeah, you're putting the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> but hers are, I'm like, low key or just like. I think that's a different time. Show genre. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think we're reading different yeah, things. That's a, like a werewolf romance. Yeah. Oh, is that? Okay. Yeah. Full subgenre. Oh, it is? Okay. Well, yeah. I always thought her, like, we're losing you. Like, I always feel like we're losing her to, like, these weird subcultures. Well, have you ever, even, like, uh, well, sometimes things will change. Have you ever, you ever read uh, Man of the Cave Bear? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really good uh, book. It, like, there's a movie and a book, and then the book series started to get more and more raunchy romance. Oh. And I, at some point, That's I, just, is. I just had to like stop reading. Oh my gosh, she shows me the cover art for some of the stuff that she's reading, and I'm like, you just know this is bad by looking at this weird cover art of this like sexy woman like hugging this fictional beast. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I mean, and then when I stopped, it wasn't even like the werewolf, you know, it, that level. It was more like. This is more like a, a romantic. Oh, I like see. Movie. Yeah. It was, you know what I mean? It was just. It's it the was starting to like go into romance. Yeah. Like, no, I would You know, it's like the 
plans, she's like, uh, the premise of the, of the book and the movie is that she is um, one of the first humans and she like is in with um, Neanderthal. Oh, back then? Yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, Wait, wait, wait. So yeah. It, so it's romance about well, prehistoric creatures. Well, she, she, uh, it doesn't get to romance till later on. In the evolution, know, it, it doesn't seem like it, that. You know, maybe it just I like, wasn't noticing it. Mm -hmm. you know, I noticed it, but it seems like it was a little too more. Romance. Maybe I wasn't even right in the right headspace to, mm -hmm. to read it. So maybe one day I'll try to like finish reading the series. Mm -hmm. Which I remember that other. Yeah, for a while I was reading a lot of historical fiction. And then now I'm in my science fiction era. Do you ever listen or watch or read uh, alternate history? Is that, no, what is that? Uh, like uh, the, the Man in the High Castle. No, oh, I see what you're saying. No, but it, it, so good. it does books are fascinate good. me. And it's actually the man in the high castle is one of those rare things where the show, at least the second season, mm -hmm. is better than the books. Really? I was just it's gonna ask because it, it because it wants to keep existing, mm -hmm. so they just make more of the story. Yeah, they build it out so, more. Yeah, that's the only reason I would say that it's better mm -hmm. surpasses the book because of, like, I think there's two books, um, if I remember correctly. But they're like, or maybe there's only one book, and then there's two seasons of the show, and it's like, oh. It's Correct me. This is the one. Is it, if the Axis powers won World War Two, right? And half yeah. of America is Germany, and half of it's yeah. Japan. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's that's really cool. I mean, like Quentin Tarantino does some like alternate history stuff, like as a filmmaker. Like, yeah. did you see Inglorious Bastards? I think so. Like it. Spoiler. Like in it, like the Jews shoot up Hitler and like it's taught like obviously that doesn't happen but like in it like the triumph is like this assassination of Hitler and it is there's something about it where you're like I know that it didn't go like that yeah. but like there's something so cathartic about being able to rewrite history I guess for that one that's in the positive that's cool. man in the highest castle it's like in the negative direction sure. um, but it, it, it provides a lot of food for thought another one I want to mention we started talking almost said it at the top of the episode we're talking about space mm -hmm. is for all mankind that sounds like apple familiar. tv apple. fiction show it's uh sci-fi okay and it's just a slight premise what if the russians kept winning and they landed on the moon, moon first, first and everything that would happen and what happens um i think it's even in the, the premise of the show so not too much of a spoiler is that we, we the the we don't just stop after the moon. Oh, we, they keep we keep. Well, we keep waning on the moon and, and, and things, and then I'll, I won't spoil anymore. What if the competition bred more. It, yeah, it, the competition of an arms moon. race and um, space but, race. But it's it's not just like Cold War thing. You know, it, it's like we start to cooperate too. Have you watched The Leftovers? Oh my goodness! So Such good. a good crazy show. Yeah. That one, no one was watching it that I knew when I was watching it. I was watching it live. I was still in college. Oh, okay. And so I, I didn't know. I was watching it with my sister. Okay. Yeah. And when it ended, like the series ended, I felt so alone because I had no one to like un. And like back then, I didn't even like really know what Reddit was. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I didn't have anyone to unpack it with. So I kind of want to rewatch it now and like force like. Chris or something to watch it with me so I can like run it back and process it with somebody to like talk about it with it. like yeah. so it's such a intricate show I'm sure I've forgotten so many of the details at this point oh yeah so but it's such a brilliant simple premise three percent of the world disappears out of thin air with no explanation was it only three percent okay I think so or was it like twelve percent ten percent I'm thinking but, but, but. you know what but somewhere, <laughs> somewhere around there, it's a low percentage. It's not. It's enough to really mess where up. Where everybody knows somebody. They're like, 
one is. Is it not that everybody? Like it's not ten percent. Yeah, I think you're right. Except in the one town where not yeah. one person yeah. disappeared. Remember that part? Yeah. And, and so people and were trying like, to go there. And there's like one family, one of the main characters. Yeah, like everyone but her. her and her family. Yeah. Whereas like most people have lost like one relative. She lost her entire immediate family. Yeah. And so she's like so sad. Look at us. We can review pop culture. Yeah. I I, I want to do more podcasts. We want to do. We want to do a leftovers podcast. Leftovers podcast. Red leftovers rewatch party. <laughs> I would love that. So I can finally come to terms with all the things that I felt when I was nineteen and not able to process the show correctly. Oh yeah. yeah that's so good. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Have, have you ever like won? misconceptions about things okay and um, you know like oh madhouse comedy club is, is too clicky or whatever and they don't really understand it's not that it's just comics in general like we see a lot of comic or you know potential comics or whatever come go and go, go. Mm-hmm. and a lot of times people aren't going to just open up to you right away I've heard that criticism before not just of Madhouse but like of the scene in general that it's quote unquote clicky which to me is an interesting thing for a group of adults to say (laughs) because as adults right like it's like social stratum are gonna be like people are gonna be drawn to certain people and not drawn to other people it's uh yeah so I think it's interesting when people say clicky yeah um, and also, they complain about people being um, mean, like low on the list, and it's like, well, yeah, get better comedy. Yeah, help out the club. Yeah, and that's right. how it works here. It's not just a straight meritocracy, but like it, it's like 
what people say in AA, like it works if you work it. Like you got it, you have to put in to get out. Um, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about the scene? Um, you know, all the stage time. Yeah. The people. That is the best part of the scene. You know, like there's very few people that I just don't want to interact with. Oh. I wish I could say Yeah. I mean, I definitely get messages sometimes about, oh, why are you hanging around this person? It's like, I don't really know this person. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why? I mean, I just don't, I'm just not responding mm -hmm. um, to that. Because, you know, like, there's things where it's like, um, I've, had, I've been forced to hang around people that I didn't want to hang around. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then like, you, know, you start to get to know them as a person. And then it's not like I want to hang around. I, what I do is I just, I go somewhere and I hang around with people that are there. Like geographically, like physically? Yeah, like there, there, I mean, there, was a, there was a time before I started comedy when I was like, oh, I want to volunteer, I want to you know, be mm -hmm. part of, I want to be part of a group and a community. Part of community. So I um, volunteered. I, I, I was watching this web series called The Guild, mm -hmm. which I really loved. And then I was like, watch, uh, listening to a podcast, Nine Nights at the Guild, who was talking about it. And I got really into that podcast, and um, and then uh, became an extra for the the, um, the the Guild web series. Oh, cool! And then I. On the Facebook group, uh, it was season five and then six mm -hmm. um, at the Guild, and like I have really good friends that are in LA. And a couple of them moved away, but mm -hmm. um, so but now that between lockdown and then doing comedy so much, I'm kind of lost. Don't get to go. Yeah, away, and they're all busy. Yeah, and are tired. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard maintaining adult friendships. Especially, and the more barriers that there are, time, space, yeah, distance, it, the harder it, it is to like nurture those. That, that's been like one of my biggest things as an adult is I like, try to be really intentional with how I spend time. And like, I think it might be part of being a woman or whatever, but like, it's almost like I expected people to reach out to me and didn't hold myself to that same expectation. So this year I've been tr trying to show up for people unprompted more the way that I think people have for me but yeah yeah like you know hanging around like uh say madhouse it's like I can like go to different groups and, and no one's like looking at me like why are you standing next to us yeah this? yeah but a lot, not all but there's a high percentage of time where I'm like I just I'm like you know like even though I'm there I'm kind of part of the group I'm also not do you, you know, feel like that in a, do you feel sad about that or more like just a, it's more of like an objective it's it's more of an observation and um yeah not, not really sad it's just the acceptance of who i am as a person i guess mm -hmm. but it's, it's also good to be able to not be tied down to any one group you know what i mean i think it's i think the more people you have in your life to fulfill different needs socially, the better, like the healthier that is. Um, yeah. I think they like Harvard even studied that. Like the more people you like, Harvard did this study, and like let's say it had a list of like forty life events, like different things that can happen into your life, like come to a car crash, um, gets pregnant, gets a promotion, has a death in the family. So they had fifty of those kinds of events and then next to it it said write down the person you would first call to discuss this life event and they found that the people who had a higher volume of different names so like not just the same two people who they but like a lot of different people they call for different types of events yeah. tended to be much happier because they had that was indicative that they had different people who could serve different roles better whereas when you have fewer people you're trying to make them your confidant, your mentor, your lover, your friend, like all of these things at once and no person can fulfill all of those roles, let alone well. Um, so I found having a lot of people and kind of accepting how each person can show up 
yeah. and not expecting them to be more than they are it has been super helpful. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, actually, you know, I'm trying to like go to LA and it would be nice to have more people to go to LA with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like my car seats four people or whatever. You know, a lot of times you just want to just be kid. Yeah. I love kid, but. Yeah, you want like. I need, I, I need sometimes you know, to be able to interact with other people too because like I'm driving. Right. It's a job. I need to concentrate on driving. Right. Just to, like talk my ear off. Yeah. And it's like. And it's, yeah, totally. Even um, I just went up to LA for non comedy reasons. Like a, okay. a childhood friend of mine had just moved back to Los Angeles and she was having a housewarming party and a lot of our childhood friends were there. And like being reminded of like that kind of sense of community. You still know your childhood friends. Yeah. Isn't that nice? That's what was crazy. Since we the, we all went to preschool together, and then we went to the same elementary school, and then stayed friends in middle school, and then I moved away, and we grew apart some. But then after college, you become adults, and you start like reaching out over social media or like following each other and stuff like that. So it's been nice, and then it felt like no time had passed at all. This was like the first time we were all sharing space in like a long, a long time. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, so that was like a really fun reminder of like what community can feel like and like add, adding new people, you know, like, oh, like I forgot that I have these people who I can reach out to also, you know, it makes your world feel bigger. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, like, uh, I, I, I like growing up, you know, in the 70s and 80s where mm -hmm. there are definitely downsides like, or even like, oh, I worked in the Quails Inn uh, from 93 to 2000. Mm -hmm. It was like, I only have one friend still from, from, from there. Oh, wow. And they, that person, you know, found me on the, uh, through Twitter, I think it was. Oh, how funny. Yeah, it's like my Facebook at the time was so locked down. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, but, you know, she, she, we were close friends for a while. I had a crush on her, um, and then you know she she got a husband and a kid, and we just kind of grew apart. Yeah. Well, there's another story to that, but I don't want her to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. She knows this is like 30 years later. Uh, her husband actually said to me, "What, what, what are you doing?" You know? Oh, really? Like was threatened? No, no, he was totally chill about it. He just was like, he was like, you know, he could see, I think, that I still kind of had feelings for her. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, or, you know, or they're, they're trying to get friends that they both have. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and it's like, and I saw like, oh, I had a girlfriend and then I was going to get married and have kids and then, you know right, what I mean? Like right. we were just going in different, different love phases. Paths, paths. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I, you know, I didn't do anything except stop. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't do anything different except stop saying, "Hey, what, what you doing?" And then I would like also it was coming to like I was starting to be her, her babysitter. Oh. You know, so it already was like. You know, yeah, that's that's weird that's when weird. there's like. Uh, just a genuine friendship becomes transactional in some way. That and well, I mean, also, um, I don't really remember that much about our friendship. Uh, be, you know, at the earliest phase, you know, because I had a crush on her, you know. But right. you're just enamored and, with. And, and then we had a, a dynamic, you know, like uh, um, I can't speak for her, but anyway, well, there were people I worked with. Uh, they were like. Why, why we don't get you, you know your friendship you know it's like kind of one-sided oh and stuff I see you know um, but you know I, I I got stuff you know from her our friendship at the time mm -hmm. um, but you know things change and move on yeah um, but it's interesting mm -hmm. it is interesting watching relationships kind of go through those same like organic ebbs and flows. And that's something that I'm learning is like to be able to mourn that a friendship or relationship isn't what it once was 
but also not putting any like blame on that or fault. Like we are all always changing and growing. Um, and so sometimes your purpose to be in someone's life and their purpose to be in your life, like no longer like aligns and that's okay. Yeah. And then, you know, but you can also grieve that. They also moved away, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, it's, it, I mean, I could like randomly run know, into her, run into her and, uh, or her and her husband and, and, and hit it off like, you know, like, like so good friends or whatever. Right. I don't know. I'm not. Um, you know what I mean? Like I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not, she's great. It's not any fault of hers. It's just a current common thing, you know, that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and anyway, uh, she'll stop talking about it. So like, uh, if she hears this, she's gonna be like messaging me over Facebook. Like, what? <laughs> but you know, like I said, I don't really remember. Yeah, I'm a yeah, very happy yes. relationship. Good. Yes. Happy for you. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, let's see. What was I going to talk about? You wanted to talk about Gaza, didn't you? Gaza? <laughs> Is that a person? A place? <laughs> Do you not know? <laughs> Is it on fire? <laughs> Are they killing each other? Are they hostages? Oh, okay. It's that's a me. drink. Oh, okay. What about current events in comedy? Do you do, you do current events in comedy? Do you want to do it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do current events. I don't do, like, like for example, Israel Palestine. Not interested in discussing it at all on stage. Don't want to. It's too real for me to that's like, related to Gaza, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they're fighting over the drink of that is Gaza. Um, no, but like I like talking about like uh, like I talk about like AI and self-driving cars in my set, or like NPR, or I make I feel like I make commentary on like kind of the archetypes that exist right now. It's like you know, a liberal, what the archetype of a liberal woman is, or being self-deprecating, you know, there's some people who hate women comics, right. so, you know, like, sometimes I'll play into, like, oh, yeah, my tiny lady brain, and I feel like that's commentary on, like, sure. the climate. Um, every, there's this one time where um, there was, like, this news headline where it was this couple, married couple, was arrested because the woman was a teacher, and they were discovered to have put his semen in cookies she brought to the class for sixth graders. And my question was like, how the fuck did they find out? <laughs> you know? And I was about to go on at ACC to try it out for the first time. It, like I read it that day. And the person before me goes up and talks about it. Wow. So, so that's the trouble with current events sometimes is that when they're really hot, everyone's kind of has something to say about the same thing. So I don't like feeling like I'm not the voice yeah. in the melee of it all. I wanna I wanna kind of try to have my voice what speak about, out among the crowd. What? What about sci-fi jokes? <gasps> where you take a current event and then you project into the future and try to make a joke about it. Like I have oh I, I wanna I can't wait until the first holy war on Mars. Okay. <laughs> that's a premise. That's a good premise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Um, that's a, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Since I am a big sci-fi fan, it's a current event. You want to do like sci-fi, put them together, and magic happens. Magic happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not a bad idea. But yeah. Um, I'm like, I'm interested to see where my comedy goes because I don't. I think it'll change a lot over my lifetime. Well, you're definitely getting better. Well, thank you. You too. Um, so as I get more confident and as I learn more about myself, cause I think that's one of the hardest things is like knowing who you are to be able to be authentic on stage. So as I learn more about myself, um, 
can get more confident. I'm, I'm excited and nervous, but excited to see, you know, what comes out of it. So what Most, maybe it'll just be all race jokes. Maybe I'll be a racist. Sure. Like those elves, I tell you. Elves? That oh, like okay. Those dwarves. Oh, what about the people on Mars? On Mars? Martians? Martians? I can't believe that they can't even handle Earth's gravity. No. They just be floating out there. Are they even human anymore? No, they're Martians. That's true. But the scientific definition is if you can mate with them and then that child can still have children, that's the same species. So we're all really humans. We don't know if we can mate with Martians. Oh, if like a human is born on Mars? Well, even here, they're, like I don't want to be too controversial, but there's no, there's not really different races. No. We're not it's right. more about culture. Right. And one time, characteristics. I had a dream that I had sex with my childhood dog and that I gave birth to a dog human hybrid. Wow, exclusive on the podcast right here. I've never talked about that. I never said that to anyone before. I told you. And he was really cute. I loved my dog human baby. He lived a, he has as much right to happiness and love as anyone else. It's true. <laughs> How long did, would he live? For like 30 years? Like kind of in the middle? That's really sad. That's a really sad question. <laughs> Sorry. That's so sad. I just, he's like, it's an old man at seven years old. I don't know. I don't know, man. Have you ever heard about those people who like have really vivid dreams where they dream like the whole life and then they like have to mourn that life when they wake up? No. I, who knows if it's real, but people who like, I dreamt a 30 year life and had a wife and kids. Wow. And, like, How did they possibly there. make that up? Like, or maybe they just don't remember all the details, and then it's like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I mean, at face value, that's crazy. I mean, I've had dreams, like in a micro version, where you're like, you're really happy with what's happened in the dream, right? And then you wake up and you're like, no. Yeah, I've really convinced myself several times that I'm actually flying. Oh, really? Yeah. You're like, it's, it's happened. Like, where you're like. You're going through the checks in your like, head. No, it really is real somehow. Yeah. It's, I don't think it ever comes up that it's a dream. It's just like, I'm like, yeah, like, well, I'm doing this, so mm -hmm. it must be real. I have or, dreams or, with like, any dreams. time passes, I keep, oh, let me test it again. I'm like, did I really get to fly? Yeah. Oh, I'm kind of floating, but technically I'm flying. You know, it's not like Superman flying. Do you have trouble, like, running in your dreams? Um, I can, my body, like, struggles with motor function in my dreams. So it's like nightmares. Yeah, but it isn't scary. It's just like, oh, why can't I move uh, do normally? Ever, do you ever uh, have like partial sleep paralysis for your weight? I had it once. With, and you know how like, a lot of people with sleep paralysis talk about like the looming dark figure that they see? Yeah. I saw that. And he's standing over me. No one ever says it's a woman. Everyone's always like, it was a dude. Do you think demons are all men? That's interesting. How is it right? They like don't spawn normal, like they spawn out of the ground. Uh, like a vegetable. Like I a radish. Think, I think demons are fake. Same, but they're always depicted as men. Right. Sometimes they'll be like a busty devil woman, but not that much. Yeah. I think that says something. Wow. So right now, what would be the scariest thing for you to do on stage for comedy? Go up and wing it. That's it? That's the scariest thing? You haven't done that yet? No. Wow. Even out of my... No. <laughs> That's like such a lack so, of control. So, so have you ever like said you're going to do it and then went into regular? Material. No, I've never said I was going to do it. <laughs> is this a good or a smart goal here? Yeah, I, should I try? I feel you like I feel like nice. everyone would be like, oh, she, what happened to her? She got bad at comedy. What? 
Okay, look, this is the birth room, right? Sure is. Okay, so. The birth of my comedy career. Nice, this is true. Um, on average, how many actual comedians are in here watching you when you're on stage? <sighs> on average, say 3.6. Really? And those are people you respect? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> There, it's, it's not about that. It's like it's like it's like a it's a social thing. Like you you want to be accepted. You know what I mean. And I still find comedy incredibly vulnerable. Like when I'm up there, like I feel very bare, um, and like at risk. Like I feel I, I I when I go up here. Let me ask you again. Are you sure you, you're going to go up on stage and give me your lines and you're going to be able to say that? that? I can do. Okay. That I, that's fine. No, but when I'm going up just as me, even in the brick room. Even when there's eight people in the audience, and it's like a random night, I my I get like a pit in my stomach. So yeah, it's interesting. I need to get better at being able to be like, "What the fuck is your deal?" You know, like I want to like, but I also I don't love crowd work. I don't know. I don't know. What I want you to do is wing it. I want you to not even a premise. So what I want you to do is I'm sitting in the front of the stage. Okay. Right? Okay. The host calls you up. Okay. And all you do is you turn your chair around. Okay. And you start doing comedy. Of stuff I haven't done before. Just, let's, let's just talk like we're real people. Okay. Do it. Right now. So, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> And what if it's so unfunny? I have to quit. But, but it's not about being funny. It's not? It's not just about being funny. Can you captivate an audience, make them listen to you, respond to you, entertain them, right? Like you're funny in real life. You're making me laugh here. You have, this is not prepared stuff, right? Come out with you. You're funny. No, it's not prepared stuff. <laughs> I came here. Oh wait, wait, wait! Sorry, I jumped the line. <laughs> yeah. Flipped through you off. Yeah, run it back. Um, but no, you're right. You're right, and that is like a goal of mine because I don't think until I get to the point where like I can just be okay with existing on stage. You know, you're that, like that. That's yeah. Like I'm, I'm never gonna like self actualize. Because I'm, I'm still so concerned about being liked while I'm on stage. Okay, what I want you to do is go up there with a premise that you're gonna think that people are gonna hate. I have a bunch. Then what? How but because are you doing because if you're listen, if you're not listening close enough, I sound like a really bad person. But it's commentary, Aaron. It's commentary. So you've already broken. You're already starting the process then of going up there and not worried about being liked. It's okay. You're right. You're right. And I hate it though. I hate it. You can do it. I believe in you. Thank you. And I believe in you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, what about improv? <laughs> So like because I'm sorry because I was a theater kid I was always in improv classes growing up I was just like never good at it probably for similar reasons to what we just discussed I was too worried about being funny and liked and that's not good for it um, maybe it would be helpful I did the improv versus stand up show recently and, and, and it's on the stand up side right it seemed it seems fun but before improv I'd probably do like scripted theater. If like I've deviated from comedy. That makes sense. Cool. You're gonna party tonight? Yeah. Uh, so I could talk to you forever. Oh, of course. But this is just should, a couple of times. We should go at some point. Right. Well, we can always have a second. Sad. We can. Maybe it's always so far to say goodbye. What should we do? Is this the, this is the this, now we're going to have an exclusive part. Not only did, if you get this far, have you, the audio may 
it's going to be exclusive to Patreon too. Wow. Well, what about that? Yeah, that's I true. I have zero Patreon subscribers right now. How do you get a Patreon subscriber? Um, well, you know, your friend's cousin, they mm. they owe you money, mm. and then they like say, okay, I'll just pay you back. I don't know. Mm -hmm. If I do that, I would have not zero Patreon subscribers. Yeah. So, like, one thing is to give them exclusive content. Right. Because they're like, oh, I'm enjoying the podcast so much for free, and he's doing such a good job. Mm -hmm. I mean, our guests are interesting. And they want video. more. They want more. So that's how you do it. Okay. So now, it's like, now that we've talked about it, that now the cut off. Now it's for the now, special now, people. Right now. Thank you so much for subscribing on pay, uh, Patreon. I can't believe you finally did it. Yes. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daddy Warbucks. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you. Yes, it's so good. Thank you. Um, I never was cast as Annie. Why not? Still got the chops. Yeah. I can't. I could never pull off the red wig. Yeah, they glue it on real tight. You ever see a girl like me with a red wig? They do not want a Latina Annie. <laughs> Why the world's not ready for a Latino. Why does it have to be a Manana, manana. Te quiero, manana. Rewrite in. Yeah, it's about a green headed Latina named Anna. Anna. Not Annie. Yeah. Anna. Exactly. Manana. <laughs> this is our watch. <laughs> and it's, um, Senora Hannigan. Lo siento, Senora Hannigan. <laughs> Are you familiar with this movie? Is any of this making sense? Yes, I've seen Annie. I haven't seen her play. And she's all like, Limpia el suelo. <laughs> I think I understand Spanish. Es un vida duro para nosotros. Es un vida. This is exclusive. She's good. I'm rewriting Annie. Annie. Annie, if it was, if it took place in Washington Heights, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! I love it. Thank you. Um, so let's get real. Not that this is exclusive content. Well, the exclusive can be whatever you want to talk about. There you go. How is she doing that, ladies and gentlemen? If you're, if you're Give a round watching of the video. You'll know that she's clapping with her feet. Yeah. That's that's impressive. Thank you. <laughs> can you ride me the cycle? No, can you? Yeah. I can do this one. Damn. Watch this. And wow. Wait. I did <laughs> By not having a Latina Annie. <laughs> That's what you're missing, everybody. That's what they're missing. So. That's awesome. Um, so, so, what? I said, you, I said you want me to sing more. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, so, have you ever thought about joining the circus? No, to do what, that? I don't know, just- My dad was a carny for a little bit. Nice. He guessed weight and age. Is that, how did they do that? He's just, just a trick. good guesser. It wasn't a trick, they just did it? Yeah. Nice. There were tricks like, it's within a certain amount of days, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And within a certain amount of pounds. But yeah, you just get good at guessing. Here's the thing is that the prizes are so cheap that it's just, you're, they're making money no matter what. Right. It's just the margins. It's, just, it's getting them to play. That's the trick yeah. is being charismatic enough to get them to waste money for this terrible, terrible prize. Yeah, exactly. It'd be someone like me that he looks younger than they are. Mm. Uh, like, ah, 
Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh. If someone guessed knows my that. age correctly, I'd be pissed. My dentist thought I was 20, so. Nice. Which feels like probably not real because he has my file. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but to... it worked. I'll never go to another dentist again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, you're like moving away and then you're like still driving. Yeah. Okay. I had to get a half of my mouth teeth cleaned. I'm getting the other half on Thursday. Which, oh, I was just going to say yeah. guess which half, but then I just pointed. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, what's the purpose of getting your because I haven't been to the dentist in a couple of years, so I haven't got my normal cleaning, so they need to do a deep clean. And to do a deep clean, they numb you. And so that's fun. So, like, so do you usually just do half your mouth? Yeah, because you don't, they don't want to numb your whole mouth. So you can like bite your tongue. Uh, that's not good. Do you have your wisdom teeth still? No, I finally got dentist work. Over five years ago. And you, but but that's when you got your. I got rent back. Back. <gasps> Can I try it? <laughs> you want to my hand? Just always if it fits my teeth. <laughs> no, Wait, you have no real molars on your bottom teeth? Okay, the only real teeth are right here. Four teeth right here. Mm -hmm. Can you see how they're different colors? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing else is real in your mouth. Right. I have top and bottom dentures. Five years ago, what did your teeth no, look like? No, five years ago. Oh, they were awful. Oh, they like removed your teeth for this? Um, or were they already Well, missing? they removed all the back ones because they were bad. And they shaved down these and ones? Then they, yeah, and then they capped them. So these don't come out? No. No. No, they're, uh, what's this? It's capped, right? Was it a bajillion dollars? It was a lot of money, and, um, and then I was paying it off, and then I lost my office job. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the company got bought by another company. And they they, they stayed, kept me on for like four months, and then let me go. But the great thing about that Sells. is I found comedy. Like, oh, that's how that. you found it. Well, I mean, I, I wanted, I, I had, a, it's almost the new year, so I had a, New Year's resolution to, to, do, to try comedy. Oh. And then a whole year went by. Yeah. I missed it. Well, I, no, you didn't it. miss it. You were just a planner. Yeah. Planner. You plan out your resolution. I did comedy at the Madhouse of uh, Horn Plaza, and, but then I didn't get back to it you know, because I had a day job, office job, mm -hmm. and I didn't know that there was like really anything in North County. Is that where you were? I was in Oceanside, yeah. Ooh, when did Madhouse move from Horton Plaza over here? Um, over a little over five years ago. Uh, so when about I about five years ago, like twenty eighteen. No, a little more. It was in two thousand seventeen. I think it was over there, and then they moved, and then um, that was part of the time I had off, and I went to try to come back. To, they were already here. Because when I started, this was already here, but I had assumed it had been here for a long time, but it sounds like I came right after the move. Yeah, yeah, it was, um... Did they have two rooms at the old one, or just one room? I think it was just one room, but I only performed, I only, uh, I went, first I went there just to see comedy, and then I went there, like, for a con. It was a holiday, it was a Monday, it, Contest, I first time performed on stage. Oh my goodness. And, and, it's, and it just was convenience that I wasn't, think, I wasn't thinking I was going to be so great. Mm -hmm. And I did podcast stuff. Okay. So I did I did a character uh, and it didn't go so good. Oh. But I actually said, I actually was told I did get some votes. Okay. So. Do, what is your relationship like with like a bad set? Like when I have a bad set? I'm depressed. Um, I think it hurts me. It, it, it just depends on, uh, it definitely can make me upset, like why did I waste my time? See, that's never what I felt. Not waste my time, but why, why wasn't I able to 
pull out of the bottle. Oh, yeah. Oh, one interesting thing is, is that um, years ago, someone's like, oh, I'm really impressed like how you're not doing well, but you just power through. Someone said that to me once, and it's such an insult. And I was like, that's not good. No, that, someone literally would, said that to me. Like, I like how even the audience can be giving you nothing, and no, you still have great energy. I know. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they said to me, and it hurt my feelings profoundly that they said that. And I was like, yeah, I, I just That's just a way for them to, to try not to do that. In queer culture, that's what we call, like, lightweight shade or, like, subtle shade. That's subtle shade. They don't even realize they're doing it. Maybe. Or maybe they're, I mean, do you know who you're talking about? I don't remember who's talking Probably a comic that says you need to do comedy anymore. I was also a comic. Because the idea is to be in the moment and adjust to the audience. And, and yeah, it's a living, breathing thing. Yeah. Um, I'm trying hard not to do that. Right. I'm trying hard to do. But then there's those audiences that no matter what, it feels like you will never be able to get them. Not you. One will never be able to get them. Like, you're trying everything. You're trying to pull all the levers. But are you? I guess not. Because, like... I don't know. I mean, I'm talking, yeah, maybe a talented person. Not. But like, for example, like, like if it's a really like if it's, I noticed this when opening up for certain male headliners at ACC. Like, if it's like a really broy headliner, who I am, unless I like put on a character that isn't me, which I don't have. It's not in my repertoire yet. They, there was felt like there was nothing I could say to really get them on my side. They were just like. We let the girl on stage, you know, that's what that energy felt like to me. But obviously a better comic, or I, it's, that's the difference. I don't know if it's a different woman comic or just simply a better woman comic, you know? Because another comic probably could have done well in that room, girl-wise. But not me. Not one. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, but... Um... There's so many things to talk about with that. Like, I'm just amazed, like, comics that can go up there, straight face, not moving, say jokes, and get laughs. It's like, I gotta sell my jokes. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't feel my jokes are funny enough to stand in the room. Mm -hmm. I see. You know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're, they're, like, one of the times it's like, I was doing my puns, and they weren't working, and I'm like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll do more puns. <laughs> I'm like, then I'm like, this, this was a show. And I'm like, like what did I do? Mm -hmm. Why did I do that? I have to like totally do something else. I like go up there and do dirty stuff. You know, I gotta mm -hmm. switch to dirty stuff. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Or I gotta do wake them up, do crowd work, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I try to have like, I try to make sure my jokes have like span different, a lot of different topics. But the one thing like I don't want to compromise is like I never want to feel like I'm not speaking in my voice, and that doesn't mean not that I couldn't be a character. But like those ideas and like the seed of that character have to be from, you know, like have to be there has to be some truth in it. Okay, how about this? What you should do is start observing yourself in everyday life, right? Because you have you have friends and family that have different senses of humor. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And you, you just, when it's not going well, you just talk about, oh, my sister. When we talk about, we sell, we sell, we tell each other these kinds of jokes. Yeah. You know that's I mean? a good point. It changes the relationship with the audience. Yeah. And then, because then that's going to be, the humor you have with your sister is different. Mm -hmm. or, or then, uh, or you could even kind of make fun of the audience, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh. But, you know, not a crowd work and not a hostile way. You know, like just kind of imagine what a broy crowd is gonna laugh at. And it's not that you're changing who you are, you're trying to relate to them mm -hmm. and have them be on board with you giving, they, the audience wants to be entertained, right? Mm -hmm. They maybe want to laugh, mm -hmm. maybe they don't know it. Yeah. Right? So that's what I would suggest. Yeah. Just each each audience, you know, are they ever going to respond to silly stuff or, you know, 
Mm -hmm. just, yeah. Observational. I need to think of an idea that I need to write down. If I don't write down an idea, it's gone forever. Are you like that? Yeah, that's why I, I put everything in the cloud. Like the, these notes are in the cloud, the jokes are in the cloud, booking is in the cloud. When are you coming back to Quantum Brew? Oh, the mic? It's a, it's a mic slash show. I'll come back. Well, not this Friday because I'm on here. You're on here? Mm -hmm. Congrats. Thank you. So, not even a host. So you want to do. We'll put it down. Let's, let's pull up the KCAL. The KCAL. Is the 22nd too close to Christmas? I'm Jewish. Well, sure, but you might have doing something with your non-Jewish appointment. Um, yeah. yeah, that works. Quantum Wait, Brown. seven. Yeah, 22nd, right? 22nd. It's Friday. Okay, I'm booking it. You! Yeah! That's, that's how it happens. You get booked. <laughs> Come on the podcast, get booked. This is an exclusive part, though, that so yeah, they don't, they don't. No one else gets to know how the sausage is made. Have you ever had a friend that spelled their Sarah with an H? Did I ever have a friend that's also spelled it with an H? Yeah. Because mine's with an H. <laughs> serious? You didn't know that? I forgot. Yes, I'm a big believer in the H. You know the significance of the age? There's a significance. When God, God of the Jews, was choosing his chosen people, he chose a couple named Sari and Avram. And then he said, Sari and Avram, you will be the father and mother of my people, the Jews. His name, God's name, in Hebrew is Hashem, with a Jewish version of an age. And he said, to give you my marking, I'm going to change your names from Avram to Abraham and Sari to Sarah. I'm going to give you. I hated that. I, I'm going to guess it's Jacob. Uh, anyways, I'm going to change your name from Avram to Abraham and Sari to Sarah. I'm going to give you my H. So the H is God. So Sarah's without the H are demon. Oh, they're godless? They're godless. Hell spawn demons. No. So we, do we tell people that we're recording in here? Maybe I should block them in there. Yeah, I wonder. Entertain the audience. I'll be right back. She's going to be on her phone the whole time, right? Oh, Jacob's calling me. What do you want? Like, actually, he said no, he did that. Oh, he did. 
Have you guys talked to Nt about the the, the Patreon zone? Have you talked to Nt? Yeah, because every time I come on here, we end up talking shit on one comment. <laughs> <laughs> a specific comment. The same. Uh, time? It's always like a. a it's like a, yeah, it's, it's like a carousel. The same. Four we comments. talked for non Patreon part. We talked about whether or not Chris Espinosa booked me on my first show because he thought it was actually funny, or if he wanted to. <laughs> well, you know. We're not speculating. No. Was your first show here? In this room. Oh, oh they did book two so shows, cool. four that's shows tonight. Nice. Dude, you know what's funny is that you know who I found out who was the main culprit of why they they don't have them back here anymore. Who? Uh, Allison was telling me. She was like, "Yeah, when we do that, we just steal all of them." And I was like, "You know, you're the reason why uh, you can't do this." Steal here. what? They would just take the audience, and then she's like, "Yeah, they would be packed out, forty people in there, just two in the main room." Oh. Uh, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, you didn't expect this." This was unpaid, and that was paid. Yeah. That's some bullshit. Mm-hmm. Well, my first show was full. Yeah. With, with fun. Yeah. Like. 30 people I knew. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's so cool, I guess. Yeah. Well, Ryan to be Murphy. fair, it wasn't like my friends. It was all Cole's friends. Oh, right, Because I didn't have friends. Right? Yeah, I ha- I held my phone the whole time. Mm-hmm. You did? You just kept looking? Well, that but I didn't look. I actually didn't look, but like, I was just so nervous about forgetting. Yeah, I get that. And then, remember that fucking guy? His name, I think, was Chase. Do you remember him? He was from Texas. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Chase. He had really bad skin. Okay. Okay. I, I forget. He he was and he was really bad at comedy, but he was going up a lot at like ACC and here when I started. But I like didn't respect him at all. Maybe his name wasn't Chase. He was he was from Texas, blonde. He had this joke. He was like, everyone always assumes I'm from California because of how I look, and I'm like, no one has ever assumed that. Yeah. You're so yeah, ugly. Everyone yeah. assumed that from California uh, how sunburned I am. <laughs> yeah, and so I got off stage and he's like, hey, a little bit of advice. Drop the phone. You look like one of those idiots who can't put their phone down. And I remember nice. being like, "Don't talk to me." <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of advice, sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> was he ugly? Wait. Okay. Oh, fuck. I didn't get a look. Sorry. Don't let me hit it. Today. But look at this wireless charger. Oh, that's. I it's swear, I thought that was a recording device. No. I thought that was like to record the episode. Are you oh, that was from your phone. Yeah. Okay. It was so funny when uh, the last uh, episode I haven't edited it yet with um, Gabe. Gabe Ramirez. Mm-hmm. He came, I, I had my notes here and I told him it was recording video, but he also was sometimes talking into the iPad. <laughs> that episode was a good episode. Yeah, and I did I didn't um damn I didn't correct damn. It. It was yeah. that was <laughs> so fucking funny. I have never had anyone react to someone's dead mother with Gabe. No, he said damn. dead mother and then he said. <laughs> He came blood. back two weeks later, and I thought that was so short. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's well, it just I, I don't expect damn. At least just <laughs> I have like a like a uh, what is it called? Uh, fuck, like an expect window of time. Yeah, window of time where there's no dams. After that, <laughs> like I'm not at a funeral that I really like. Damn, that bitch yeah. is ugly. Yeah, my mom died. I pulled the plug. My mom came back two weeks later. Damn. <laughs> I think it was also that you guys were almost having. It felt like I was. Like, we're like a host. host. You're like a good host. Yeah, that's what it was like. Going, I was like, <laughs> was like <laughs> I have to contribute. Have you ever seen the show Hot Ones where he just doesn't talk the whole time? That's a good host. You know what I mean? So you know, well, but it's a group here. No, like, oh, what word? Huh? Yeah, you go, oh, we got your Instagram. Yeah, and then they talk. Huh? They talk a little bit. I was saying, like, I thought maybe it was like a bit, like where he doesn't say a word. No, no, no. Well, that's a question, but just, that would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> He's a monk. Like, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, what do you call me a picture? He's looking at Kyla's. I'm trying to give you something. I'm trying to give you something. Oh shit. Alright, can you talk to her now? Huh? I don't know. I, I, I got a weird face. I thought you said Carlos. Kyle. Oh, you thought I said Carlos too? I didn't hear I heard Kyle. I was referring to the kill tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like, I'm trying to give you something. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. No, that's why I was, I was just confused. My look was confusion. Uh, not no, no, just no, 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 no. We never talked about Carlos in the same room with him. Yeah. Is, you Kyle, is Kyle the comic you talk shit on on the Patreon? No, it's <laughs> Alan Henderson, CBS. And it was funny for CBS. We didn't say his name for like 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and there was more. It's like, yeah, they got banned from barking, he has long hair, and you know, he just talks. Yeah, I finally said that he used to work here. And yeah. He did? Yeah, he did. yeah. yeah. When I, he worked here uh, when I worked here. You worked he here? Yeah. Yeah. for a little bit. And then, Damn, was that me? You after I worked here for a, a, a while. I worked a lot, and then uh, I stopped 
Is that why you became friends with Shar? No, no, I became sure friends with Shar because we. Uh, she oh, never heard like, <laughs> <laughs> The other woman. The other woman. Who went I have there. a bit with Shar. Isn't that fun? Mm-hmm. Every time we're on the same show together because she's like never there as early as I am, mm-hmm. I text her, you'll never work in this town again. That's so she funny. thinks it's funny. Yeah, she <laughs> likes bits like that. Yeah. She likes that. And then she asks me for the location every time. She's like, where is it again? <laughs> no, she never goes right. Dude, one pet peeve of mine is Char will, will like never budge on like not being able to make a show. So she won't sit until like it's like, oh, I'm on deck, okay, I can't make it. And it's like 45 minutes away. Yeah, she did that at Good Bar all the time. Yeah. Um, but she was like usually on the Wednesday shows mm-hmm. here also. Um, yeah, usually it's, you'll never work in this town again, she goes, where is it again, and then I send her my location. I'm like, <laughs> she never <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote something cool on my phone last night. Like looking at notes and then what did she write? She wrote something. You know what she told me today? What? She was like, yeah, I mean, are you coming to the Christmas party? And I was like, uh, I don't know why. And she goes, because uh, Jamie told me yesterday he's going to get fucked up. Yeah. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, he just kept coming up to me and going, I'm going to get fucked up tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't you keep coming. And she's like, what? <laughs> she wrote on my phone, I like babies, but not in a good way. I like to rub my ass on them. They help with my rosacea and eczema on my ass. <laughs> Classic shower. <laughs> Oh, you just told me not to give it to you. I know, so I I was like, oh, I'm going to be gone so all you, get one. And if you want to be on, a, on Quantum Brewing again? Anybody? Uh, I have that if I'm not working. Okay. I don't work at ACC, but I mean like my other job too. Yeah. I'm also trying to throw it out. Before he back, before he back. Oh, it's all free? <laughs> yeah, don't. I've been holding you very down. Do you like technology? Yeah, I like, uh, uh... You're a woman in STEM. I'm addicted to technology. I've been, like... I'm addicted and I just can't get enough. This, the I'm addicted to the tech. I allowed myself to I'm get the Apple Watch. That's the new one. The newest one. <gasps> Wait, can I see it? Well, I expected you to get Android. Well, no, because I... Hey, rude. Rude. That was my Android. That I had Android. I talked about it in the word, like, we chain, and subtle shape. I was subtle shaped. <laughs> It's not an afford thing, it's just for some reason. How about this as a business idea? I am a consultant to people with autism to let them know when people are giving them shade. Ooh. Call down. Mm-hmm. Sarah actually said. Oh yeah, and then seven, then seven, uh, seven letters. So you can do it. One in hundred autism. What? They call you like, hey, actually, we, we need this. That's not seven letters. Isn't it? Wait. A-U-T. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can we cut that? <laughs> One eight hundred autism wink autism oh exclamation point. One eight hundred no you can't do a fucking exclamation point for this in a number. One eight hundred I autism. Oh I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like at Sarah do actually trade that trademark that now. Trademark I'm gonna that tell, now. I'm gonna tell Chris to buy the, the Yeah, tell him to do it now. Holy shit. Every time I have an idea, Chris buys the domain. It's can, like I say, one can, can I get some can I get some can I get some more money? I said I have did I say that? No, you said that I was going to have seven letters. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him to tell him to just in case I'll just do it with an exclamation point. Chris, Chris, new one. I'll just do it with an exclamation point. Who's close to that? Is it yours or? Oh, yeah. Oh. No, it's fine. I didn't mean to. I got too hot. No, no, I, I get that. I thought it was Tim. It was I told him he could take off his underwear. I didn't mind. Yeah, just do it all. Take off my underwear? I'd have to take my pants first. No, remember you ripped it? <laughs> Remember that was the part for the picture. <laughs> you ripped your underwear out without taking your pants off. It was amazing. That's actually kind of impressive. Dude, my, okay. it was crazy to do it once though. I remember when it was really hot, my uh, second grade teacher would take her bra off and we would like cheer for it. She would keep her shirt on. Oh, shut I, swear to God, I swear to God. You can't do that now, No, no, yeah. You couldn't do it in those yeah. days. He's, he's what? very young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so so, so she, would, she would go, she would go, all right guys, she would ask us for permission first. We'd go, yeah, it's hot. We, we didn't understand what a bra was. The second graders gave consent yeah. for her to go bra us. And then she'd take it up and, and whatever, we'd watch a, uh, was she hot? Yeah. She was like nerdy hot. Uh, oh, fuck. Nerdy hot. And she, uh, you know, she's the reason why I got held back. She's not not because of her, but because of my. I got held back in third grade. I got held back in second grade, not because of grades, but because they thought I was too immature. Too premature. 
that messed you up in life. And then it was mature. Back then, you didn't make a brown dog at all. Back then, you just show the tits. Well, no, we would boo when, whenever we would see people in bikinis. We'd go, ew, so, no ill. You know, God doesn't make ill bodies. Oh, uh, he does so uh, really ill bodies, though. Is that a segment, ill bodies? Oh, you said your boobs. Yeah. I was just thinking about going to that house. You can't see anything. No, yeah, it helps. I'm, I'm bound right now. Yeah. Would you? Would you I, have my, I have my chest bunch. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> would you ever, do you know, like, uh, what is, what's her name? Julia Fox? You know, she didn't she do anything? She got, she got really skinny. Would you do that at one point? You're like freakishly skinny. I I don't know how to say that. I've been trying. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but like, that's my life. But with the resource suits. So, but like you're not like how Kim was super thick. Now she would you do that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I just want to know. I would do it now. I. I well, would, you have the resources to do. I that. do if I go to TJ. Ozempic. Oh, Ooh. Uh, do we, we need, need, we need for, for the Ozempic? Can we go to okay. TJ for an hour? Podcast idea. We, the three of us, do <laughs> it's, oh, it's the It's this miracle weight loss drug. What's the side effects, though? You just don't eat. God. No, I think it's worse for No, you get maybe nausea. Oh, but better. Oh, so it's perfect. No, you just, like, food makes you nauseous. You're just like... <laughs> really? Yes. Could you imagine? Huh. All of these people wouldn't be doing it if it, the side effects were that bad. There's a lot of things that people do with really good side effects. Yeah. No, well, I mean, uh, there's one company. So how do they keep living? Is, what? They eat They eat enough to survive. Yeah. They eat a cracker, a cracker a day keeps those empty going. Keeps the side <laughs> exactly. away. Yeah. Maybe I should do those empty then. We just snore. There's definitely some bad No, it's a shot. And we can all get it. Why is it a shot? Yeah. On like on the eyes. I'm gonna look it up. Just need to exercise. CJ loves getting shot. Okay, can you give me? You a show it to yourself. Can you do it for me? Yeah, we all. I don't trust myself. I give it to both of you. Yeah. It has to be the butt. No. Well, like, are we gonna reuse the same needle? Okay, I'm right in the fat. Like 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 diabetes shots. Okay. Where does it go? Is there a vein there? No. Or is it your what's your fat tissue? Oh, yeah. Okay, Thank I guess you. it just looks like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain. Oh, All my favorite hobbies. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, love what I well, What's your secret? You lost so much weight in a week. I just have diarrhea. Got diarrhea. For a week straight. That's true. Every time I come back from Mexico, it's insane. I lose weight because I have so much water poop. It, just, it doesn't absorb. I'm sorry. It, none of the nutrients absorb. It just comes straight out. That sound That's perfect. perfect. Sheesh. Just all the vitamins <laughs> and minerals. Just camera chat. Make sure we're really still recording. What did you get from the white elephant? I still got it. Don't say it. Is this supposed to be a secret? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know. But I didn't get it yet. So. Oh, we have to wrap it. Do I have to get no, something? Because no, no. I'm not. We'll just ask you one We'll say one thing. Everybody that wants to can be invited. Oh, it's inclusive. It's an inclusive white elephant. You see that? You that? Then why isn't it black elephant? If you open Instagram, oh yeah, it is a black. First one you can't mute. There's white elephant and black elephant. I wonder that. About the brown elephant. It's a glitch. There's every color elephant. We just call it white elephant for short. <laughs> Wait, for short? What short? What's what's long? The long one is red. So white, black, and brown. <laughs> There's white, black, brown, pink, yellow. yellow. You sound like a Republican. I don't care. If they're white, brown, purple, green, Cuban, <laughs> <laughs> you can get whatever you want to as long as, as white comes first. You know, like their skin only shows on the outside, right? Which is the part that matters. <laughs> All right. So, and what's on the uh, outside? I'm gonna get a gift or something, so I'm gonna yeah. do that. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go Hollywood Hustler. Wait, should we do should a, we a field trip? trip? Yeah. No. Or yeah. Do we have anything more to go to Patreon? No. Mm, Take care of Daddy Warbucks. Ooh.